Welcome Automated Nation. We're going to do a review here today on the GE Druck Gen 2 or Genie. It's the second generation of the DP620 uh, handheld process calibrator. Alright, so uh, what we're going to do first thing is we're going to power it up here. Let's go over a few features while we're waiting on it. This is channel 2 and channel 1. This is typically your read channel and this is typically your sourcing channel. Um, it does supply 24 volts. Um, it is battery powered. It is rechargeable. It is very, you know, it has a USB, it has a USB host port for hosting USB thumb drives. And this is where you'll do most of your updating. It has a USB client port for becoming itself a USB thumb drive transferring files and communications. And of course the charging port, all of it's behind this. Pretty rugged little flap here. Uh, button is all encased. It has a nice front end on it here. These are the uh, gold ports here for connecting to the pressure base, which we will show that later. On the front end here shows your applications. So here we have the front end. Um, here's our your applications for operations: calibrator, heart communicator, field bus, and profi bus. Um, this unit does not have the field bus and profi bus, so it is. Uh, but it can be downloaded later and added. This unit just does not happen to have one. Um, we have our typical uh, settings, data logging, documenting, statuses. This is where uh, your alarms will be. Uh, operating applications, file structure. Um, this is communications for other external devices. Um, we'll go over most of the. Um, operational things in tutorial videos later later on but this is more of a product review uh, help files touchscreen calibration and this advanced access here all right so <clears throat> settings basically those your screen intensity you get a theme here light dark that's your light theme it's easier to see in the daytime Darks easier on your eyes at night. The data logging feature. This is where you set up, recall, and transfer any data logging that you may have done. You can set the unit up to data log for a period of time. Um, set up, obviously, you set it to the uh, SD card or the thumb drive on the side. Trigger, periodic, key press whatever period it is and then whatever it is that you're recording documenting process calibrator it does analysis programs uh, what you're picking for um, you can set all this up in the procedures and then you execute your procedures for your documenting uh, applications here we have a PDF viewer Internet Explorer Word viewer Excel viewer PowerPoint viewer and the desktop this is a Windows CE based device um, the PDF viewer Word viewer Excel and PowerPoint can all be used for making technician training videos or small snippets to go on here to show how to hook up certain applications or maybe like some harder uh, transmitters that usually if you have people some trouble you can put a little training video on here uh, obviously the desktop for Windows Explorer for I mean Windows, for Windows CE one of the really nice things about this unit in my opinion is the onboard manual it gives the technicians and operators the entire manual that's on the CD for any questions that they may have, any troubles that they may run into, all of the answers are right here in your hand, which is really nice to have. Under the advanced tab, um, there's a pin. It's in the manual that I just mentioned earlier. This is where you're going to set the unit up to get ready to do downloads and updates that you can get from GE. Um, they are free. You just check periodically, put them on a thumb drive, and then there's a pretty simple startup procedure to get them downloaded on there. I've done it several times without a, even a single problem. The operational applications are the calibrator, the heart communicator, foundation field bus communicator, 
and Profi Bus Communicator. Like I said before, this one doesn't have uh, Foundation Field Bus or Profi Bus. It's just not big in my area, so we get away with the heart and just the calibrator side. So, if we go into the calibrator, Okay, so here we have the calibration interface. This is for a Type K thermocouple. As you can see up here on the top, we have channel 1 sourcing the thermocouple. On channel 2, we're reading current. On channel 2, as you see here, we're going to be reading current and we're going to be sourcing 24 volts. So we'll power our transmitter and we'll read the current back. There are some setups to these I haven't done. The nice thing about this are the predetermined applications. If you swipe here from the side, you can get into tasks. In your tasks, you have a bunch of predefined calibrations. Sourcing milliamps on channel 1, 24 volts. Anything that you see the 24 volts in the parentheses means it's going to supply 24 volts on channel 2 here. Now if you go back, of course there's tons of these, and if you notice, it shows you how to connect each unit. You see the color codings, and you'll notice that they give you color coded leads to go along to match that. Alright, so if you notice in the tasks here, we have a bunch of predefined tasks for calibration. Let's just go ahead and pick this one here. We're going to source milliamps out on channel 1, and we're going to read milliamps on channel 2 with 24 volt loop power. So we just touch it, and the device sets itself up and gets ready to read that. Hey, here you have the interface. You see on top you have channel 1 and a number, and on the bottom you have channel 2 with the 24 volts. And that means there's 24 volts right now between on channel 2 trying to power up a transmitter. Right now it's set 55 milliamps as the upper scale. That's what it comes at by default. So in order to change that, go in here to the settings. Uh, oop, oop, that turns the heart resistor on and off. Go to process. You go down here to the scaling. Under the scaling, you can easily just set this. Four. Twenty. And now that's set for zero to a hundred percent. And of course you can change the displayed scaled value also. We're going to hit the X. We're going to accept it. We're going to hit scaling, we're going to go back, and now we're reading 2%. Milliamps, of course since we're sourcing, we just simply enter, and of course we're going to get a flash because it knows that there is no loop connected. And again, if you want to change this, you can go back to the electrical tasks, favorites, you can save some in a favorite list, or you can create a custom. Go into the custom, channel one, we can source whatever we need, channel two, and you can set it up however you need. It's very functional. You can even add a few extras here, depending on what modules you have connected. Now, if you had the base connected, then you would see pressure tasks related, and they'll show up. If you have the pressure base connected, or one of the uh, pressure modules that goes up on the top here that has the dual module, then the uh, um, pneumatic and pressure tests will show up here. The uh, pressure tasks will show up here also. So, same idea, but in a heart communicator, that's the great thing about this.
So the same thing here. If you go in from the swipe from the side, you're going to get a list of predetined tasks. But this time we also have a heart communicator running. So let's uh, source a thermocouple and read milliamps here with a heart communicator. So you notice this time in the window that we're going to have three tasks running. So we have channel one, channel two, and this heart communicator. Now right now it's polling, it's looking for uh, an instrument, obviously not, we're going to find one. So if you touch each one of these, you can read and set up your sourcing. And down here, once you get connected, and we'll get an instrument one day and we're going to do a uh, tutorial on how to connect to a heart instrument with it also. So then your heart interface environment opens up. Right now there's nothing obviously loading because there is no device. And it tells us it can't find a device. And I get that. Where is it heart? So we're going to disconnect. Okay. And then let's go in here and look. Let's see if we can look at Okay, well there's not any in there. There used to be one because I used to have a few saved that I was going to show everybody. Alright, so overall the Druck Genie is a great little device. Um, I think it's nice. It's a handheld unit. Alright, pros. Uh, definitely a great communicator. Definitely a great calibrator. Very accurate device. Easy to use. Quick to navigate. Quick to set up for anything else. Uh, the onboard manual. Superb absolutely fantastic the documenting superb uh, being able to run the applications powerpoints being able to view any files for custom applications anything like that is fantastic in my opinion it's got a pretty front end it's a nice looking unit it's easy to it's pretty rugged it's got a nice rugged case battery lasts a good at least uh, definitely getting at least an eight hour day out of it uh, maybe even more depending on what you're doing obviously the more you're sourcing 24 volts the less it's going to last but overall really good unit um, definitely recommend it I think total cost um, for this unit I think was about $6,500 maybe more $7,500 somewhere in that area um, but for what it does for the combined unit combined features uh, it's definitely a killer little product I hope you enjoyed the video, um, you know, like us so we can uh, get a little bit bigger, get a little bit better. We're definitely going to start bringing in more products. We're going to start bringing in more features. Uh, we're definitely going to have some uh, little interactive videos. So keep us posted, subscribe, check it out, keep coming back.